Yeah, so uh, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Aishan Rao. I am a PhD student from Indian Institute of Technology, Tirupati. And this is our first uh, live interaction sessions for a uh, deep learning course from NPTEL's NOC tw uh, 24 CS114 course. Okay, uh, so uh, I think you might have already joined a another session from other TA. So there will be uh, four uh, TAs who will be taking this interaction sessions, uh, maybe looking at different aspects of the course with respect to it. Uh, so I think one is happening on Friday, this is on Sunday and then followed by Monday and Tuesdays in the evenings. Uh, so uh, what I am bringing here as a different aspect of this course is uh, my uh, this uh, these 12 sessions that we're going to have 12 or 13 sessions we are going to have mostly uh, coding aspect into it so we will use uh, we will do coding with respect to it how to build uh, the RNNs feed form networks uh, CNNs all those things we will try to do using PyTorch and all uh, and how you can do it on through online how you can do it uh, those things uh, you can see that and uh, through this course and you can try it out okay since this is the first session uh, it's just more like introductory overview course and from the next sessions we'll go more deeply and use uh, frameworks like PyTorch to build uh, start coding uh, coding those uh, the concepts that you have been learning right I think in the first two weeks you will be learning about neurons perceptrons all those stuff so we will see that how we can use it in a code do we need it or how PyTorch is help us to reduce those aspects into it okay so that's an overview as of now so every week uh, from my side every week from three to five i will be uh, i will be here and uh, taking this code sessions uh, nothing related to assignments I will not be covering. So uh, those things are covered by other TAs. So if you are interested in that, you can join that aspect as well. Otherwise, anyways, these lectures are being recorded and they will be uploaded on YouTube from uh, from today onwards. So we will provide the link and PTL people also provide the link with respect to that. Okay. Uh, so before starting, you have any questions or any expectations from the sessions and all, please let me know right now. Otherwise, we can start off with respect to it. You can unmute yourself and you can say. Uh, no, no, uh, most probably not. Uh, they, they will not ask you to write this code and all that. It is for you uh, because this particular deep learning course has a lot of mathematical foundations and it will tell you about more from the perspective of that how CNN come to the CNN, right? So uh, those theoretical part is more in this course rather than the practical aspect. So I'm just trying to bring that in the picture. But in the assignment wise, uh, they might not uh, going to ask much or not in the exams. They are not going to have that thing. Yeah, that is for practical knowledge. Yeah, so let's say, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. It's both theoretical and objective, uh, object, uh, objectives also, they will give you MCQs for sure, plus maybe some filling the blanks, but in some cases they might have to ask you right answers also, short, short answers kind of like that. Uh, yes, yes, it's a computer-based exam. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, currently for today, you don't need it late to, uh, like from the next sessions when we go in deep, uh, you might need it. I will, what I will do is, uh, uh, from next sessions, 
whatever code we are going to do, we, maybe you're going to type out a way, going, uh, whatever the code I'm going to explain, I will provide you for starting of the session. You can maybe put a split screen and look at the code, try to run it or type it out simultaneously. That those things will be there. It will be hard to do because uh, it's just not like YouTube that you will stop and just write the complete code. Simultaneously, it will be hard uh, currently, but you can still look at these sessions maybe later once the recording is uploaded th then at that point of time you can stop writing the code by yourself because that will be much better experience in that aspect so currently it's not required uh, but later when you want to tap your own code uh, with respect to at that time it will be good simultaneously it will be hard while listening and typing but you can see uh, if it is comfortable that while uh, well i'm writing the code or i'm explaining the code it is okay for you to type it out simultaneously. If that is suitable, then you can do that. Yes, uh, so not like I have to, uh, not in this current live session, I can't provide you to this, but what I can, uh, what NPTEL will do is uh, the way you see right week one week two courses and all that they will provide the YouTube links there itself they will add a section and they will provide that link uh, so from there you can click it out and you can do because after the recording session I have to upload it so uh, at the same time I can't give you but it will provide in the end that in the uh, slots where you can see week one and week two content below that only they will be they uh, they will be a separate section for interaction sessions at that point of time there you can look for any of our TS recording. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, in with that uh, thing on let's give uh, let's start. Uh, this thing I will just give you overview maybe uh, how I will uh, start off with uh, since it's a two hour uh, setting and uh, just a minute yeah so it's it, since it's a two hour thing uh, we will take uh, most probably and uh, two sessions like R and R so like three to four we will take, let's say after the five minutes break and another uh, one hour thing. That's how we're going to follow this format. And uh, since it's the first uh, course, I will just give maybe for the people who have zero knowledge or zero idea with respect to, I try to give a motivation uh, on why this all this ML uh, machine learning stuff came into picture, why we need it. And then the next half of the session, I will just, today I will go through with basic uh, uh, libraries, Python libraries, and what is Google Collab, those things I will introduce to you, and uh, why you should be aware of why, uh, while coding it out, uh, because those are the implicit things, uh, those uh, libraries or the way to use it, it will become implicit uh, as you start coding more and more for the deep learning algorithms, right? So all this stuff I will try to cover today. Uh, let's see how much we can cover or, uh, or if it is over earlier, then we can see that what else we can look into. Okay, so let me start by sharing the screen and wherever if you feel like that uh, my audible is not correct and uh, because I don't have a second screen now, so I don't know uh, whether my screen is visible also or not to you, right? So at that point of time, you can unmute yourself and you can tell me that the voice is uh, not, audio is not coming correct or so, says that, so that I can reach or the screen is not coming, so that I can reshare, okay? Okay, so uh, with that, uh, welcome to the uh, deep learning interaction sessions. This is the first interaction session from me and my name is Ishan Rao. So uh, before jumping to the ML, uh, and uh, uh, we will start with something how we reach to that and we reach to that aspect through uh, through a thing called expert system. So this is the first way of codifying that, uh, so to make a machine do something to take certain decision, we build first something called as expert systems, okay? So it's basically a rule-based systems and uh, let's say one of the common tasks is binary classification, right? So if given an image, how will you try to classify as, uh, let's say cat and dog? So it's a task. 
so how you can do that so for that or any other thing so let's say you have given certain uh, parameters that okay uh, you you want to buy a house and uh, you have given the square space area you have given um, cost per square feet and uh, you want uh, given the locality and all and based on that they have to calculate what is the price of that house will be right so how this rule based system came into the picture let's look into that and then how why it make a uh, logical sense to move towards the machine learning aspect okay so i am going towards more generic that the first week of the course look at the neuron aspect which it started directly delting with the deep learning aspect but i am taken a one step back and i'm just looking at the why even machine learning thing we need it into the part and deep learning is a sub part of machine learning right so uh, if i say machine learning deep learning is uh, by default it is inside uh, come inside the machine learning aspect okay so it comes it boils down to one thing so how a human makes a decision okay so let's say he ha let's say a doctor is there and he has to uh, see a patient and to see that whether the uh, the patient got a dengue or not so how the doctor will take a decision right so from there we st uh, we started off our journey with respect to it so there are some common characteristics for a dengue that like it might lead to some skin rash fever headache cough vomiting and all that so let's say we have this five parameters as of now okay now doctor will ask these five parameters i will check about this whether it exist or not with within the patient and based on this uh, uh, it might try to say that okay the person might have a dengue or might not have a dengue okay so still how the doctor even know that uh, i should look out for skin uh, rash or high fever or any of these characteristics right why should i look into this why not more or why not less right so why uh, these param uh, aspect i need to look into right the reason it is because we learn from our experiences right so human decision learns from its past experiences so the doctor it's easy to assume uh, common to assume that doctor might have seen more dengue patient earlier and he might have found this five characteristics to be common that if any person has any let's say four out of five characteristics or five out of five characteristics it might lead to a Uh, a disease called dengue which has been there right so we might say that uh, for patient patient one i have only skin rashes and i don't have any of the four other symptoms for one person i have cough and skin rash but i don't have headache uh, i don't have headache or i don't have fever i don't have vomiting so i might still not have a dengue but e even though if i don't have cough but i have remaining symptoms i might have a dengue so that's how uh, they are trying to take a decision out of it right so as we see more granular aspect of it it's more down to uh let's say for this case let's say it's it's come down to it's zero or one problem right so for a one parameter we are saying that either it exists or it doesn't exist okay and when multiple parameters come together and uh, the human will take consideration of all those multiple parameter and then uh, gives the final output so given this particular input it gives a final output right so since humans make it with respect to it and uh, we are able to make it in a mathematical sense also that we can represent it in some number form these decisions uh, that's how the start of the expert learning uh, machine learning uh, see expert system start uh, coming to the picture right so given a simple decision that you have a patient and you have to take a dengue from from there till here where you are taking the record of the multiple patient history and based on that you are taking a decision that's how we are trying to build our system right we are uh, relying on past data so is it applicable multiple domains everywhere it is uh, applicable with being the space uh, shuttle programs or simple uh, are your softwares right even the phone that you are doing uh, looking into right so it is working on certain decisions or uh, it, it is following certain set of actions step by step so if particular uh, particular ac action or step or uh, aspect is followed then only you should look for an another step right so like uh, in cricket you look out for lbw right you have to look at multiple aspect before giving a cricketer out or not batsman out or not right so based on that we are taking this decision 
so how can we define it more in a much more uh, concrete way so we define this decision making basically in terms of features and rules and which are very much common in the terminologies for our machine learning and deep learning right so these are five things skin rashes high fever cough vomiting and all these considered as a feature these are called as features only now the question remain is okay let's say we have the data for the features how to make a rule out of it how to use these features to make rules so that's where the uh, billion dollar question comes into the picture and that's where we try to bring bring our machine aspect into this okay so so we have the features we have the data related to all those features now what we want to do is we want to outsource this whole aspect of decision making to the machine so that's where the first the first step uh, of our evolution came towards machine learning is expert system where we will take all these features into the account create a set of rules and now this set of rules are being created by some expert okay some expert is there who have seen this like doctor is one of the expert right so uh, since expert is uh, since experts are available they will look at it and based on that uh, they will decide uh, that whether a particular decision has to be made in the context or not so in this case the expert systems systems are rule based systems where they look at these features and experts who have the domain knowledge in that area they're trying to build out of it okay but obviously we, they have certain limitation that's why we have to look beyond expert system okay so let's take an example for it to understand that why it has a limitation and these limitation are written here but let's look at it one by one right so let's assume there's a hr is there and he has to hire someone from the job so it what a hr will do it it will take as much of as information about the candidate uh, out of it so it might take that for each candidate might look out for uh, its uh, what you say uh, its academic achievements how many projects it has done awards what kind of language programming language in which profession into or any other aspect right so for one candidate it is extracting multiple datas it is taking lots of lots of data about that information and use that information as a criteria to decide whether to hire that person or not right so uh, what hrs will do it they will look at all the previous datas on looking at how other people has uh, hired it or what kind of uh, good productive people are found in the uh, in in the organization they will collect all those information from them also and then see that what are the kind of matching we can do to see that okay if these criteria fit then i should hire a particular person right so the first limitation come to this expert systems is we have a lot of data to make sense from okay so to let's say here we have looked at earlier only on the five characteristics to decide whether a person get a dengue or not but here we might have 20 30 or 100 features out of it right so how do we we can't look at each and every uh, feature and try to make sense out of it and try to make a rule out of it right so there a lot of data to even to make sense of let's say this row has 100 100 columns that means 100 different aspect of this uh, hr will take lot of time it's a very long tasking a uh, lot of time to and make sense of data and as well as not only this new data will come over the period of time as well where the you will consider new aspect of a uh, uh, to consider for hiring a person right so it is a keep on ongoing process so that's the first thing that to build a expert system we have data, we have a data but to to make sense to make a sense of it out of it is the hard task then similarly following this this thing the rules that we have to build out of that data is very complex because we have to do lot of uh, permutation combinations to build that okay if 12th marks is more than 80 and cgpa is less than 6.5 then i should not take a person or more than 5 6.5 should take a person or the per- the, n- the person should have done number of products should at least should be uh, greater than 10 like that so the rules where can can become very complex over a period of time because we want efficient number of rules we don't want multiple rules we want small set of rules but that rules should be uh, complex enough to hi- uh, to look at each and every aspect of that candidate right sometimes rules can become inexpressible for example uh, 
let's say in this context, HR will say that while uh, interviewing that person, uh, they say that uh, the, uh, the, uh, based on the body language, the person is very confident looking. But that kind of things which are very qualitative in nature, but not quantitative in nature. We are all, we are, when we are looking at data, these are all quantitative in nature. They are all in numbers. They are all in certain particular aspect, right? So in that, uh, in that, in that scenario, uh, how do you quantify such, uh, such rules? So sometimes rules become very hard to express also. And sometimes rules can be unknown also. You can't, because you can't see each and every scenario. So it can become very cumbersome. So from which, uh, from this aspect, we understood that the expert systems that people are uh, tried upon, it's very hard to maintain, it's very hard to build it at the from the scratch, and it's hard to upgrade over a period of time. Okay, so, so what's the next? The next thing should be that we have the data, we have the features, now we have to learn to how to write these rules, right? So how to move from writing the rules to learning the rules, learn the rules from the data itself is where this whole concept of machine learning, AI, uh, if you want to call it, uh, this thing come into the picture. So we are moving, we move from writing the rules to learning the rules and the learning rules should be done implicitly by the machine learning system or, uh, or the mathematical function. So machine learning usually defined in multiple form, but the basic form is this, that you have a X, which is an input. Okay. And you have a output y you have this two data with you mostly for training purposes okay so like dengue we have whether the person is dengue or not that is y and the skin rash or any other function uh, skin rash cuff and all these are come as a x as an input these are features now we have to define this f this function f the whole course that you're going to do for deep learning is to learn what is this F means, okay? How you going to connect X with the Y, how you going, and that kind of rules that you're going to build out of it uh, will be stored in the form of X, a function called, uh, function called FX, okay? So the whole, throughout the whole course, uh, and when we say a system of a network models like feedfall network, uh, conventional network, recurrent neural network, uh, gradient descents, black pro propagations, all these are family of functions or algorithms which people have defined to help the machine to learn this, uh, to, to learn this function and to stitch the given input with the output, okay? And one of the uh, family of function that we are learning uh, throughout this course is deep learning. They are multiple and we are much focusing on the deep learning aspect, okay? So this is a higher overview with respect to the machine learning that from the expert system where we need to write a rules from the data, we asking the machine that, see, this is our data. You take this whole data with you. We're going to provide it in a, uh, in a clean format, in a proper way so that you can understand it. Now give me some rules out of it. So that is the crux of a, any machine learning and deep learning algorithm out of it. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the why we are using, uh, we are learning deep learning in our day-to-day -day life and why it's becoming much more because it's making our job easier, uh, human job easier to uh, deal with it. And the reason why it is successful because we have a lot of data, a lot of data which is generating on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, we have abundant data. Let's say you want to know what is, how a product is doing, go to this Amazon, look at its comment give it that comments, all their reviews and comments on that product and you will get to know that how that uh, product is working. Okay, that is one of the things. Okay, that's this data abundance is there. Then we have something called as learning algorithm and models. Uh, so we have another thing called learning uh, models, learning algorithms and models. So what do we mean by it? It means all the models, like let's say uh, transformers through which the ChatGPT has been built as a base architecture. Transformer is that is the base architecture on top of which ChatGPT has been built, right? As a which use GPT as a generate uh, generative pre-trained model, right? So that those algorithms are available to us. Okay, it's not like it's been there with the corporate. It is openly available, and people can l look at this algorithm, tweak it, and try to build out of it. 
and we have relatively fast and cheap devices if you have seen the history of the uh, how the ai uh, winter and how we pass that winter the one reason is we able to get to a um, state where we can get cheap devices for computing okay so these are the main reason why ml is successful so now the overview question is where do you lie stand in this world with respect to it so uh, so this one of the images i got it from the linkedin um, which quietly summarize it in a very much beautiful way so if you are a beginner you are lying somewhere here the bottomest of the pyramid where your ta your task currently is to learn to how to collect the data how to curate the data and how to define the task out of it so once you have the data what to do what kind of task you have to apply that is something you are trying to learn out of it okay the next step where you want to go eventually and where most of people want to go is this ml engineering where once you know the data and task now it's it's you to decide which kind of algorithm which kind of para, uh, models you have to want to try and train upon okay and this is where the deep learning course currently come into picture we are trying to tell you that this data uh, exist and this kind of task you can do now where for particular task what kind of models what kind of algorithm you can use it to make it much uh, to make a better uh, machine learning model out of it or deep learning model out of it that ml engineering part is something people uh, you have you want to go that's your destination eventually and that's where the jobs are right and the third one is uh, ml research where the task is uh, how given a mod, given a particular uh, dl algorithm or any learning algorithm how to make it much more better effective much more faster better with less computations and all those stuff those aspects will come into the ml research the other top where people are like academicians and few research labs are working on on top of it okay so currently you are at the lowest layer where you you will you are learning that how to take a data first of all how to uh, what data looks like you have to learn how to collect that data how to pre process it says that you can give it to the next step where you want to give that data and you're defining the task and then after defining the task you are going towards the uh the next step where the ml engineering where, where you want to go where just by looking the data and task you will you will decide which model to use so it is like this uh another analogy you can take it that your uh let's say uh the first ml research are the one where are the one who are look who are defining that uh what kind of car needs to be made okay the second step ml engineering tells about a uh, different kind of cars which i can drive and the third one are the one that destination based on destination let's say we want to go for mountains so we have need to take a heavy car so we are just defining the just defining a destination ml engineer defining the what kind of car you need to reach to that destination and ml research are the one who are making those cars okay so uh, it's on you to decide after over the end of till the end of this course where you want to be over this course uh, and and through that how you going to make a uh, development or advancement in this area okay so that is the overview uh, with respect to the overview of like machine learning how we reach to machine learning and what we are planning to go towards it very high overview okay now what we are going to do what what we are going to code in this 12 sessions okay so we are going to start off with this neurons perceptrons uh feed forward network back propagations all this thing we are going to code it out okay so that's the one thing that we are going to do each of these thing we will see uh i will not i will not go to the theoretical aspect because that aspect is already covering the course i might give us some summary out of it but idea here is how we can do that in python and we are going to eventually going to utilize pytorch and google collab where you can do this thing on a, in a free uh, in a free way and you can try it out multiple aspect of uh, you can try learn play with it uh, through online right you don't have to install anything from it okay so that's the uh, that's the idea yeah please yeah we uh, i will uh, send this recording like once the session is over i will record i have to upload in youtube after that uh, the link should come in the 
in the session uh, in the sections where you see they are all weekly content right there you can find our youtube links as well okay yeah okay so this was the overview and i will talk about six jars of machine learning through which we are going to deal with over the period of the whole course but before this let's start a uh, basic uh, coding and i will just let me introduce to google collab who are who are not aware of pytorch i will maybe start from the next sessions as i uh, as i will code at that point you will learn what are the things to know know thing about but i will uh, go at the stage of where uh, so libraries called numpy and pandas and plotting these are very common three libraries that you're going to use heavily uh, uh, for your uh, this preparing the data preparation thing so for that i will just introduce the basic concepts and uh, after that i'll just dis in briefly i will discuss what this six jars of learning and how we look at each and every aspect through these th six jars of learning okay so that these things i will cover so so let's start basically with google collab okay so google collab is a free service so uh, where you can uh, use the google systems okay uh, it's a basic cloud service that you are having and it's a basically a jupyter notebook you have to have a google account for accessing this so once you access this it the uh, screen will looks look something like this uh, let me increase the yeah i think it will be much more clear now now this is basically a notebook it's called ipython notebook or basically a jupyter notebook where you can write a code uh, cell by cell and you can run those cells okay so i will tell how it will work with respect to it but this is a free of cost and uh, you just need to sign in with your google account or google email uh, google email and to go uh, to one of these things okay then uh, let's look at the some features so if you click on connect so you can uh, here you can click on uh, while working on with it uh, you can click uh, on connect it will assign you a one system online so it will give you some, maybe some 12 gb or 14 gb ram system without gpu if you want with gpu also uh, they will pro provide i think uh, I think they will there is an option where you can provide the gpus as well okay i will i will tell you with respect to that but currently this they are providing a system with me with th almost 13 gb of ram and 100 gb of disk size so i can use this where i can write my code i can store my data and try to run it okay but since it's a free version looking it has this uh, obviously it has this uh, collab pro also but uh, if it's a free version uh, what within this instance so till the time uh, the this uh, system is connected to me through online i can upload any of my data and i can run anything but after the session is over my data will be lost okay so that one thing needs to be remember otherwise code will be preserved for sure okay so uh, this is a goal collab which you can use autumn uh, for your practices okay this is one thing Another thing that you can look out for eventually, uh, if you want to improve, is Kegel. So a Kegel is more like a, your competitive programming website, right? So where you practice your competitive programming. Similarly, Kegel is there, uh, where you can practice out your own uh, machine learning capabilities, like uh, like machine like they will have some competitions, uh, and you can they have provided the data set and all and you have to start coding in the machine learning or deep learning and they will provide the machines also through online and you have to try it out okay so that this is a kind of uh, it's a very good thing if you want to go deep into your deep learning and practice it out because by theoretical aspect it's it's very much needed to understand for you to understand but to practice it out you need kegel like kind of websites uh, where you can write your code you can find your different problem statements and you can try it out automatically okay so uh, kegel is something you can look into uh, 
but for this sessions uh, we are going to use google collab i am going to share this notebooks also with you whatever i am going to type out every single thing or uh, bef and if i have uh, in certain sessions where i know the code is very long i can't type it in 2 hours i might uh, write few code snippets already uh, already and then maybe write few code snippets so that we we can save time at that point of time and i will share all this notebook to you and you can try it out in your in yours as well yes so yes so uh, currently you might not need gpu as of now even with normal if you just click on connect and uh, it whatever the uh, system it is giving to you uh, that would be suffice because you are just starting it off but eventually when you're going to deal with big big datas and all there you might need a D gpu maybe i uh, in one of the sessions later i i can tell you that how to connect to a gpu here and how uh, with uh, how much data you can try it out right so like where that time takes it's hmm, yeah no that part is also free for now for, uh, for like you can use only one gpu at a time so that is free uh, they might not give very high gpu maybe 3 gb or 4 gb gpu on an average but that would be suffice for st starting uh, for people like us who are learning right so that will be sufficient later uh, if you want to go with higher gpus and all maybe you can look at some other uh, sources but right now for practices this uh, google collab is good enough okay okay so uh, there so before starting uh, let's start writing the code so i will go go slow in this and i will show basic basic aspects so uh, there are two type of cells one is text and one is code okay so the text is is like this where you can type out uh, the things that you want to do you wish tells about that what the code is going to do so let's say i will write python basics and and i'm going to write one more thing uh, so i will look at some libraries so i'm going to today i'm going to focus on a uh, few libraries called numpy numpy i will look at pandas i will also look at matplotlib okay so these are very common uh, data processing libraries that we we needed uh, so i just giving some introduction because from the next time when we start coding the actual uh, code for the multi perceptron and all that there uh, this uh, this thing should be implicit to, uh, for that aspect okay so this is a python library so and if you don't uh, have done much coding in python also that uh, i think you should start doing it and that will be uh, very useful for you okay so this is a code cell and so to run this code cell yeah you can run directly here run cell and it will run so luckily for us also the google has uh, provided us that the multiple libraries it has already been present there so we don't have to worry much about it uh, but if you want to add some new libraries also i can show a mechanism how to put that libraries here okay so this is one way that you can click on this uh, play symbol and it will run the cell otherwise you can do shift return shift enter okay shift enter if you'll do it will also run automatically so this is python code where i'm porting numpy and uh, so numpy is basically uh, we use for few things that is storing arrays and it provides lot of functionalities to deal with it because actually when we are going to pass the data to the model uh, to any model let's say let's say cnn we are saying convolutional neural network so we are going to pass the data in a array format okay so it so here uh, what kind of operation you can do with the arrays uh, makes uh, numpy very much interesting okay so this is for storing array and pre uh, not only storing as well as storing and processing the array 
so one what do i mean by arrays so here we have seen a table right like here this table where lot of columns and all this there so this will be converted as an umpire array eventually and we will use this arrays uh, uh, for further preprocessing okay so this is a numpy so uh, to create a, a simple numpy array we will write it as numpy np dot array so np is we have given as abbreviation for numpy and we are just passing it out as one two three and then we just printing it out print text so i'm going this is very basic so if uh, if people already know this uh, like for this session, I'm going to go with this basic aspect for now, okay? So this is a simple array that we're tying, right? And you can look at its type by printing. So uh, another, as you have seen already, that even though I've written the code in different cell, X is present in the above cell, still I can access its data, I can access its type and all. So that's the advantage uh, that this Jupyter, uh, this IPython notebook gives us. So we write partial, partial code, and uh, what this notebook will do is it will uh, all make sure that it will look at its above context to understand that what kind of values we are looking into, okay? So it, even though it looks disjointed, it is considering x, this x value is considering the above two cells as well, where it, it tells about that it's a numpy array and it contains a certain values. So that's why it's good for beginners to try it out in this kind of cells uh, to learn about uh, how to even even for basic coding also you can use this kind of notebooks. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's say this is a simple basic uh, array that we have created np dot array right now if you want to change a basic yeah. Yes. Yeah, so ND array is basically array only. It's, it's just that array has a very common meaning in programming language. Okay, so so for that, just to make it different, they're just telling it as an ND array. There's no any different from it. Like one, two, three, as, as you write in a C program or Java programming is same as that. But ND array has certain more functionalities uh, which NumPy provided. Uh, so even though it's stored as a particular array the, uh, in a contiguous memory, uh, but it ND array just, when you assign it as an ND array because it's a type of NumPy, it just provides more functionality to deal with it. So if you, right now, uh, for uh, sim simplicity understanding, just keep it as array. But if you want to know more about it, there's a documentations for NumPy as well. Just a minute. So you can look at it, but currently just now for NDRA, just uh, it has some other meaning as well, but just uh, for now keep it as that it ha it is basically an array with certain ad additional functionalities, which only NumPy is provided. So that's why uh, it has called as ND, NumPy dot ND array. Just uh, right now keep that as is mine uh, because you can't do certain operations in with basic array if you uh, write in a Python or in Java, only you can do with NumPy. So that's why just to have a separate meaning, they are providing that. And to know more about NumPy, uh, you can look at its doc. And there are a lot of tutorials on how to understand NumPy as well. Okay. Now, let's say you have this array. Uh, yes. Correct. Yeah. So X, when you're just printing X, it is, you're just uh, providing that whatever, it's a variable. E eventually at the end, X is a variable. Okay, now X is a variable and X uh, contains some data. This data is one, two, three. Okay, now what 
type of x do type is a function uh, it's a type is basically an inbuilt method for a particular uh, python where it tells about what kind of data type it is data type of x let's say so let's assume uh, i just write it as a uh, string and i will just string one and i will set hello okay this is i just created a string uh, variable and if i just do print type string one it gives me that it is a uh, this str1 belongs to the class uh, of a type called str string right so type is basically a method which tells about that if you pass any variable to it, what kind of variable it is. Okay, that for that only it it, uh, it is providing that information. So that you be aware of that uh, when you started uh, doing coding and you, you will look at so much of different things. Like you might look at data frames, you might look at lists, you might look at this NumPy arrays. So you might deal with so many of this aspects. So you should know that what kind of variables you're storing your data into. So for that only I just showed it. Now, yeah. So currently we have stored a basically integer set of numbers, np dot uh, array, and it is providing as values. Now let's say, uh, now as one of you asked, like what does nd array specify, right? This array is as uh, a special, uh, basically a kind of array where you can perform lot of operation in a very simplistic ways. So. Uh, let's say you want to make it as float okay so i can use a function called as array np dot as array and i can provide uh, maybe uh, l and float so sorry x and float i will just change its type and I, if i just print it out so it will change my numbers from integer to float okay so th i just change as a basic a data type uh, of this using the as array functionality okay so i'm just providing multiple functionalities which numpy arrays will do and these are common functionalities reason is uh, later at some point of time when you will go deeper you you going to deal mostly all the computation will happen floating points okay your numbers what you're going to pass are basically a float in general when you're going to pass your data as features okay in there also there's something called as float 16 float 32 type float 64 so like multiple combina combination of types will be there this 16 32 six, uh, 32 64 are basically a bits okay so uh, how many bits in which you store want to store your data so those complexity will come into the picture. That's why people use as array command very frequently in the uh, code, where let's say your features are basically in say in a integers that is simply as zero and one, they convert into the floating points. Okay, uh, that is one thing. Uh, to know the size of your array uh, in this NumPy array, you can use x dot shape and so x dot shape will tell that you have a single array and it's it, it has three elements to it okay so it just tells us size of the array a uh, numpy array basically and uh, if you want to know more about npy array or nd array and all that you can use any this command np dot array or np or nd array and just run this and it will show you the documentation of it to for you to understand what kind of uh, function it is and what kind what uh, parameters does it require and what kind of return statement will give so these are also pretty good tools which this goal collab provides you and you can take off uh, as you are ex start exploring more and more while coding you can look at into these aspects okay uh, now let's go a little uh, more deeper since we are mostly we are not going to deal with 1d arrays we are going to deal with multiple arrays right so so let's say let's create an array uh, np array which basically it's of two dimension so one two three and four yes 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you for us. Yes, correct. It's uh, not number of comments. It's, it's actually, it's more like number of rows and columns. So let me write this and maybe through this example, you might get a better understanding and print x and print x dot shape. Okay, now uh, let's look at this first. So when it's a 1D array, okay, so when it's a one dimensional array and I'm just providing only one value, when I'm providing x dot shape, it tells about the number of, uh, it should tell, it tells about number of elements, okay, present in that particular thing. So it assumes that there's no other row. But when I do a 2D array, uh, so like I have two rows, I've defined as one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and you have to be cautious about this uh, brackets as well because uh, they are a little tricky and common source of errors. So uh, so when you provide this 2D array, so it looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. And when you do X dot shape, it tells about the my NP array has two rows and three columns. Okay, two rows and three columns. But here you can't say, you can't say as three column as of now. It's just a format right now, so you just consider it as number of elements. But here, uh, when you provide multiple uh, data at that point of time, it will be look at uh, two rows and three columns. One, two, three, and four, five, six are two rows, and one, four, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the reason is uh, even with print dot shape, it will come. Uh, I have two statements here. If you observe between these two shells, okay. So if I remove this aspect also, and if I run this, it will still come. So there's not much difference per per se, but uh, it just I I have a habit to print. If I'm writing prints, I'm printing it out. So it, no, there's no per se difference. Okay. Okay. So let's say we have a, a yeah. Uh, so let's say we have an array, and we have an array of two types uh, of two cross three. So it's basically called as two cross three. And uh, one more thing that you have to keep in mind uh, while learning this deep machine learning, deep learning through coding aspect also, or even in the course uh, that you should have some knowledge upon uh, vector algebra, uh, sorry, not vector, linear algebra. Okay, and that means you should know about what is matrices, what are vectors and um, operations associated with, with it, okay? So the reason I'm saying matrices and vectors because this one, two, three can consider as a vector, okay? Because it's a single, uh, single uh, one dimensional array. This one, two, three, four, five, six will be considered as a matrices, okay? And your whole, uh, when the data will go in, uh, you're going to have deal with datas. Uh, so the data will be looking like this, a table where multiple columns and multiple uh, values will be there. It's, if you look at it, it's basically a matrices, right? It's a, it's, it's a basic matrices. So this matrices you have to store in some variable, let's say X in this case. So you should know what, can, uh, and uh, the data pre-processing and even the data manipulation, which happens over the period of time, uh, they look at the concepts of matrices vectors. Uh, there's some dot product of matrices or dot product of vectors. Those things will also come into picture. So uh, so you should have some idea about th uh, this also as you go along to the uh, in the course. I'm not aware. Of, I don't think so in the whether uh, the course will talk about this in detail, but I think uh, they will also tell you or give you a glimpse about that 
uh, the data that you're going to store is eventually a matrices. So how are we going to use that matrix, a set of numbers uh, for you, uh, to give it to the machine to learn from it, right? So eventually you're going to give this set of uh, numbers to the machine. So it has certain format, it has certain set of operations associated with it. So you should know those things as well. Uh, so right now, um, let's put it above. Yeah, let's go ahead with whatever we're doing. So we have created through NumPy array, uh, we have seen a single array and 2D array right now. Now to access certain elements out of it, uh, we can simply do this square bracket x the variable square bracket and we have to specify the row number as well as uh, the column number and if you just do this it is it is giving us six so why it is so remember that it's come down to zero indexing that your numbers are actually starting from zero one two zero one so even though it's your shape is two cross three because we are starting from we are assuming this highlighted one two three row as one row and then four, five, six, the second row. But in machine, it looks at uh, start from zero. So it looks at this is a zeroth row and this is uh, four, five, six as a first row. Okay. So these are common base, uh, common programming uh, aspect uh, principles also applies here. Okay. So that's why when you write one, two, uh, it's not two, it's not even five, it's basically a six. Okay. Then if you want to. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Zero. Yes, yes. Correct. So if you if I have to show you, it is it will be like uh, zero zero. So how if if I have to tell that where my location of one stores at, right? So it will store at zeroth column and zeroth row. So it will be one. And if I let's see. oh awesome they already done it so if i have zero zero it's one if it's zero one uh it, that means zeroth row first column it is two zeroth row second column it is three like that first row zeroth column it is four okay so this is called zero indexing Uh, press tab, 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 T-A-B. Uh, no, I have no idea because I'm using tab here whenever they're giving suggestions. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's uh show you a few more things from the uh uh this numpy array that you can do okay uh so this is one way of accessing any element another way is uh so you can write it down in this format x square bracket zero and just say zero uh colon two okay so if you just print it out it give you array one and two okay so that means from the zero throw, okay, zero throw, extract first two elements. Okay, it will not consist second as a last element. So uh, this is semantics that you have to keep in mind. Uh, it will not consider three. So if I just add three here, then it will take one, two, three. Okay, it will not consider the last position as it uh, as the ending position. So this is one way of accessing it. Then uh, another way of writing the same thing is uh, x square bracket zero and colon, sorry, comma colon. So it once you when you when if you do this, it will also give this. So I just come this out. So it will also give you the whole row. That means you are not specifying uh, explicitly uh, uh, till which position of uh, element of values you want. So it will consider the whole row. Okay. So you have to practice few of these stuff. Uh, 
another thing that uh, let's say if you want to create a new uh, numpy array with only zero values and you have to specify uh, the what is the size of your matrices will be that is four cross five right so it's a if it is a four cross five matrices it will create one so i haven't printed it out so let's print it out okay so it will create uh, by default it will take a float as uh, by input and it will create all these things uh, four cross five matrices out of it okay uh, let's say you want to create a matrices with only diagonal elements a lot of matrices operation deals with the diagonal matrices so or basically identity matrices so let's see how we can do that np dot i and let's say four cross four so and this is identity matrix yeah Ah yes. Yeah, so it. So, uh, what is the default? If I don't provide np dot zeros, what it will take? That's what you're asking. And correct. I think by default it is taking float 64 itself because we all have 64 bit system. Uh, but I think I need to uh, check that one more time to con give you much confirmation. Okay, but ideally, but it should set to 64 because we all have 64 bit system. So, but still that's a good question. I, I will check and I will let you know with respect to that. Okay, uh, few more stuff. Uh, so this is called as identity matrix. That means all the diagonal elements will have one and all the remaining will be zero. Okay, so there are a lot of operations that we deal with it uh, comes down to identity matrix. Uh, that's why you should have some uh, basic uh, background on the matrices and vectors as well. Okay, so we are just here, what we are trying to do here is accessing all those values for us. It's uh, because eventually we're going to use that at some later point of time later stages. Uh, so we should know what kind of tools or which, which command can give us, uh, for which command can give us uh, the following matrices, okay? And let's say you want to create a, any random, uh, uh, just two more commands and then we can take a five minutes break. Uh, so, so to create a random, uh, so you can, there's a function called random dot random from numpy and I specify that size four cross five and then if I'm printing it, it will give me certain values automatically. It's a flow in a float number. Okay. Now there's a very common operation called as uh, uh, transpose. Okay. Where it will be transpose will become, uh, so let's say if, a uh, if my uh, matrix is four cross five, it will after transpose it will become five cross four okay so the columns will become rows and rows will become columns right it's a very common operation which peop, uh, which uh, uh, we use during the back propagations and the convolutional network uh, time where we're dealing with images so it's a very common operation and the bu the beauty of uh, numpy is that we can just write it is in a very simple one liner code. So if I just do x dot t and if I do print z, it will transform transform my code. So you can see that earlier we have four rows, now we have five rows, but four columns out of it. So these certain certain operations that we do on the matrices are being mathematically uh, for which we have, if you have to write the code, we have to write good set of code. Here, the NumPy arrays will help us to streamline this in a much more simpler format. Okay, uh, this is there, and I think, uh, okay, few, yeah. Ra randomly, yes, uh, I need to look at the code for it. Uh, just a minute. 
<laughs> I don't know the command, so I need to search for it. Random or rand int. Okay, so I need to use rand int function. So the quiet is giving two. Uh, let me see. Okay, so I have need to define like this, okay. So I have to pass the number of elements maybe per row, zero indexing I guess, so it will take only four elements and it will create a two cost row matrices out of it. So it is possible with respect to that as well. Okay, uh, what we'll do, it's already four seven, uh, we are listening to me from an hour. So what we'll do, we will take a five minutes break. So let's come at 4.13, let's say 4.12, 4.13, and we'll continue with this. I will show few more example from NumPy and few more from plotting, and then we'll jump to Pandas, which is also a very common uh, library uh, through which we deal with the data, okay? Uh, and I will show you a CSV file through which we are going to deal with that data. So we'll work on that. In the, in the this next one hour okay so in the so what i can do i have to go here i guess to stop sharing so let's uh, come back by 4 12 and 4 13 4 13 okay so if you have any question you can uh, write your comments here um, i will come back in one or two minutes and i will see that okay
yeah hello everyone um so one of the question as like why i is using for identity matrix uh, that's a just syntax that they have given that this i function uh they might not use i like in legit i sense so they might have used similar sounding thing that's the only thing uh it's just a convenience way to write it out but it it uh, so but the idea is that if you have an identity matrix you give any size all the diagonals should be one and that has been used a lot um uh during the processing and doing the learning algorithms so so you don't have to install a google collab you have to go google search google collab you can use that google collab online you just need a good uh stationary net such that uh, you can work on the google collab for hours so if you don't if you're not working on the google collab for let's say 30 40 minutes uh, or be, or maybe because of some inter internet instability there's a chance that you might lose the data that not the code but the data that you have stored in the system because you have to reconnect with that at least in the free version yes 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 yeah so identity matrix is a special type of matrix where uh, it's a square it has to be square matrix uh, so identity matrix is by default a square matrix that means the number of rows and columns has to be same and uh, only only it's th this thing will be only diagonals will be one rest of them will be zero so it used in multiple operation like inversing a matrix matrices or uh, to uh, let's say only focusing on a diagonal element so let's say you have an image and you want to uh, so when you're doing convolutional operations as you go ahead maybe at some later point of time so there's some something called as filters in convolutional uh, layers okay so each neuron or each image will go through those filters one by one and it will convert that image to in different format so I, the idea of any much deep learning machine learning model is to look at data from multiple angles from multiple perspectives so identity matrix is one kind of uh, way people have used heavily to look at the images from multiple perspective i'm just giving one use case and by that a very deep use case unless you start going deep into that uh, maybe the example i'm giving might not might uh, resonate with you but uh, you can take it as of now uh, for granted this thing that these are very uh, powerful set of matrices uh, which people use commonly in their operations okay okay so let's yes uh, it's okay if you uh, currently not have much about idea of matrices and vectorises but as you go ahead i will still suggest everyone to have brush up your knowledge on matrices vectors kind of common operations uh, like transpose that we have seen right now right uh, the rows will become columns column will become rows it's very common operations which people will use eventually in their code uh, when the, when uh, when they are providing that data to the uh, model okay uh, this is one thing and uh, let's see any any other interesting thing we can have so you can okay there's another uh, common uh, method called reshape so so what reshape means is let's say we have a y right now uh, so oh okay okay thank you thank you for reminding me i thought i my screen is visible just a minute okay if my face is becoming uh, obstructive i just let me know i will close my things so that you can see the whole screen okay okay so earlier we have seen transpose where for we are just uh, one of the common operation of matrices where we are changing rows to columns and columns to rows right so there is another common uh, functionality called reshape where uh, where we will try to let's say we have a four cross five uh, 
sorry, four cross five is the mat uh, matrix we have, right? So we will sh reshape it as a 1D array. That is 20 element, uh, one row, uh, 20 element basically. So at that, in that, if we just print it out. So in this I have done 20 rows, I think size of X. Oh, I should do Z in that case. Okay, so uh, reshape all we'll do is it will convert that this particular Z matrices which was earlier four into five, that is it has 20 elements into 20 cross one. So I just made a 20, one column with 20 rows kind of thing. So in the single, the, uh, this thing. So why we needed it, uh, what eventually happens is when we have two matrices, let's say X and Y, and uh, x is like four cross five matri matrices and uh, y is f let's say five cross sorry um, six six cross five this so there's a rule for mul matrix multiplication that my row number of rows if I, and if i'm doing x mul matrix multiplication which is a very common operation also so what we have to do here is this 20 cross uh, 6 cross 5 uh, the number of row of y and the number of column of x should be same so that is the rule so for that since it is not possible directly so what i will do i will reshape it or maybe transpose it in this case so i will just write it at uh, x cross y cross t and in this scenario, it will become like four cross five cross five cross six. Okay, so this thing will be taken care of and the final output, the final matrices, the matrix multiplication, which will come out of it, it will be four cross six. Uh, so we are spending little time here on little mathematics and little uh, aspect of matrix matrices and uh, and vectors. The reason is eventually when we're going to code it out, we're going not going to talk anything about this eventually in the future. We're just going to talk in terms of features, how to deal with those features, what is the size of those features like that. So these things will be implicitly be uh, taken care of. Okay. So just to give this background, I'm uh, giving this aspect. Okay. Uh, so any other thing I have? Okay, so there's uh, something called as inner product and outer product. So let's look at it here also. Can we search it here or not? Yes, yes. Everything we are doing uh, are in line with the linear algebra, which we're going to do it, uh, see it later in our uh, course so there's something called as NP uh, inner product and outer product uh, that that is one thing that we can look into so let's let me define some simple lists so let's say I have one two three and and V is equal to minus one zero one and I have to find this and let's say I have to take an inner product out of it so np dot inner and I will just pass u and v and I will just print p1 so this inner product which will calc it will multiply in a such a way that it will give you only one output out of it so you should have some idea about what is inner product and outer product with respect to that if you don't know it that's fine i'm just showing multiple uh, things that you can do with this numpy array uh, functionality okay uh, so another thing is p2 np outer and it will give you uh, so it's like two cross three, uh, one cross three, one cross three, it will give me three cross three, outer product. Okay, uh, so few things you can do. Uh, okay, so let's stop here for the NumPy thing. So 
maybe you can get get what basic understanding from all this thing that we are doing basic operations to understand that we're going to use rely on matrices heavily and numpy is one of uh, the libraries which will help you to uh, uh, play some operation on top of it okay so that's the idea of uh, looking at all this uh, code now let's look at some another libraries which is called pandas so and numpy array you can say we deal with it more when we have lot of numeric data so when you have textual data also uh, for that also pandas is considered very uh, useful in our aspect as well so to write it out like import pandas as pd so i'm importing the pandas and let me take one sample csv file so the thing is uh, since i'm using a free version right now i will provide the csv file as well uh, this C uh, this csv file will be deleted automatically when i am disconnected with this current system online so so that is something one thing you have to remember that while using collab if you think that if you are having certain files which you are uploading and using it uh, that data will be lost eventually if you try to refresh this page not refresh but at least if the you get uh, your connection with the system uh, is lost at that point of this thing will be lost as well okay so let's see what is the csv contain so df dot df equal to pd dot read dot csv and just name of the file so as we have seen numpy as more dealing with the numpy array okay it's it was numpy array in pandas we deal in something called as data frame okay so data frame is the word that they have given uh so let's look at how it looks like first the data so when we do df of head it will show that it the whole content of csv file is stored in a variable called df which is a data frame and this data frame uh, you can consider as a set of matrices where you can store any type of information of different types that means a call uh, let's say here the weight is of float type but gpu rank is of integer type right maybe some uh, in this i don't know but there are a lot of uh, uh, data set where you have textual data as well right so for those things data processing for that data processing data uh, pandas library is pretty much good uh, to deal with that so df of head will show the first five rows of the data set so this is your data set mobile clean data set i found it from net so it so how do you define it uh, this same type aperture gpu rank and all these are called features okay and lot of features are we are having and we have certain rows where uh, where each row will talk about uh, about a mobile phone it talks about a mobile phone and it will tell at the end whether the mob whether it's going to be light or not so we, they have 40 me uh, so uh, it has 40 rows say so 40 columns and five rows so for a given phone for a given phone uh, they have considered 40 features out of it and eventually the output uh, is talking about whether it is being liked or not okay so uh, yes no uh, so if you want to know the shape of the data set uh, let me just a minute so if we just write df dot shape so the actual data set the data uh, data set has 109 rows that is 109 instances with 40 columns uh yes yes we can so if we just just print df directly you can uh, it will give you in a compact way but if we just write df it can give you that but the idea here is since we are show, looking at small data set we can do it but they will be data set will be in gbs 
maybe in uh, where the instances will be in thousands and thousands kind of like that so we do we just want to get to have a feel of the data set at that point of time we just need to look at the first five rows and to look at what kind of uh, uh, features they are they are having what kind of rows are there what kind of data present in those rows right the number of floats and all yes by default it will give first five rows and df dot tail uh, will give you last five rows yeah okay so df dot shape will tell you the size of the data frame same as np dot shape that we have looked into um so hmm. exactly yes 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 so for that i think the function is read excel or something like that uh excel x excel yeah read excel is there read xml read excel is also there so you can use that as well if you have an excel data set okay yes but if you have directly excel sheet then you can directly pass it so you can up you will upload your excel sheet here and uh, you can just write read dot excel and let's say it's it's in XLX format only, Microsoft Excel format. So you can just provide this. It will read the data automatically and store in data frame. Correct. Yeah. So. Okay, so now we have a data set. Now this is a kind of data set, type of data set we will eventually look in throughout our whole sessions as well, where mostly I will keep a CSV file, it's a common format, but XLS is there, that is also fine. So this is a data set and you will store in the data frame and you can look at, you can analyze the data set using df.head command, tail command, shape, all those stuff. Now let's say we have to analyze it. So the one, common thing that you have to understand uh, eventually uh, that before uh, coding uh, any model, if you want to train a data on any model per se, uh, you have to analyze your data set thoroughly. Okay, so for that I'm going to show you some tools to understand that uh, what are those, uh, how you can analyze your data set. Okay, you should know that, okay, these are the features are there, this kind of uh, values which it present okay it uh what uh like if you have if you want to deal not if you don't want to deal with all the 40 columns let's say you want don't want to deal with all 40 columns you want to deal with only small data so how you can do it so for that you can create a small data uh, data frame out of it saying that i just need only first 10 columns out of it and uh, I just write df short dot shape. So I will, sorry, only first 10 rows out of it. I just not need first 10, uh, uh, what do you say? First, only first 10 or any 10 ra randomly also, you can define it there, uh, rows, and you can uh, deal with that. Now in that also, if you want only certain columns, so let's say we have multiple columns here. So, let me write some, uh, extract something. So I will just extract only few columns out of it. So one is standby time and uh, these are, these, whatever I'm writing are basically the columns names, memory, uh, price, let's say. battery capacity and is like okay and then if I just do simple df thin dot shape now I, I create my data set uh with only five 
values, five features. And if I just print out what how my data set look like. So out of all the 40 columns, I extracted only these five columns uh, for, for my further processing because maybe I just want to know only these features out of it. Only I only need to focus on only these features. I don't need another feature. So I just created a, another data frame called df.thin where I'm explicitly specifying that I need uh, all the data of these following columns. Okay, so I provided that in this and then it got me to this df thin data. Okay, now if you want to do some more processing out of it, uh, that means if you want to know out of all the 109 rows or 109 columns, uh, sorry, uh, mobiles, how many of them are liked, right? So it's like a SQL query that you want you used to do. So we are doing more like a programming in this aspect. So df thin and uh, so we are looking at out of the in the df thin we want to know df thin is liked equal to equal to one so we want to know all instances all instances of mobile which are liked liked okay and if i just run this and df like df like dot shape so i got 92 instances uh, where uh, i have a column called one okay so this is uh, so like it's same kind of query kind of system that you can do uh, within the data set to see that uh, to analyze the data set in a much more thorough way okay so this this is one thing another thing i want you to highlight here maybe okay here only i can say so if you have obs let's look at this particular data set okay it has multiple different type of values okay at different ranges as well so one standby time is in the range of maybe 200 to 300 200 to 400 expandable memory is there maybe from 16 gb to 64 so 16 to 64 and it's it's in type float price maybe in some thousands, maybe three to 7,000. Battery capacity, maybe 2,000 to 4,000, okay? But it's like it's a unique case. Now, all these values that you're looking at, uh, they are of different type, different ranges, okay? But they are still in a very contiguous way, okay? That means this continuous, there's no discrete value. But is like is an exception, it is called uh, it is uh, has only two values either one and zero so your data set also has can be combined defined down to two values where their data set will have two types two types of data in numeric aspect i'm telling so one data will be discrete or you can say uh, categorical categorical data where you have only specified like 1, 0, minus 1, 2, where you do, where you're defining certain classes out of it, whether it belongs to class 1, class 0, class 2. In this case, we have only two classes, whether the mobile is liked or not, right? So it has, it is called categorical. Now, another kind of data that you have is continuous, where you, your values are present in some range. Right? And the range of these columns are all are different. So the, the model that you're going to train eventually, the DL model, it has to understand eventually that for this particular standby time feature, my range will be certain, uh, will be in different range. Experiment memory will be in different range. Price bad, price will be in different range, maybe different type, okay? Earlier, so some of them are in integer, some of them are in float. So all this thing has to be taken care by the model as well and for that tools are there which can help you to de uh, deal with that okay so lot of things to explore with respect to it few more things that we can do with this thing so we have with with a shortened data set is like we can extract basic operations like mean uh, so i can i will just show you for mean uh, maybe min max so these operations also we can identify. Now these are very important for an analyzing our data set, right? So when I do df10 dot, let's say price, 
and I will do mean. So I just want to know the mean price. So and I can do df thin then same thing I, I think I will just copy paste and I will show you multiple examples. So instead of min I can take min max count so these are basic static uh, statistical thing uh, that we can deal into and also you can if you want to know more uh, more thorough analysis about it so you can do describe so it, it will give you uh, the whole this thing that we have written here right so in usual count how many instances are there mean standard deviation quartiles with respect to it uh, all this aspect will come into the picture and if you want to know for the whole data uh, that we are having so you can just do df thin dot describe and it tells about uh, this analysis uh, gives you the whole uh, Static statistical overview of the kind of mm, value that you are having with respect to it, and this is good, and this is required for the data analysis. Uh, when you are going to pass any data set before before the training, you should know you should try it out these things to know how your data set look like. Okay. Uh, these these are quartiles. Uh, so twenty five percent quartiles, sixty four quartiles. Uh, so like let's say if I take twenty one percent of the data out of it. So what are the common values? Uh, if I values out of it. So those things will come into the picture. Basic statistics stuffs uh, that are there. So to go know more with respect to that, we need to. Uh, uh, should have some knowledge on statistics as well with respect to uh, if we want to analyze the data into it. Okay, mean standard deviations and all just to get a basic overview of it. But if you want to go more deep, there are much more uh, complex operations are there which you can use it. So currently we are doing basic stuff for data science. Uh, we, are, we are doing this all to understand our data uh, through pandas or numpy. Okay, now uh, okay so if you if you upload your data here all these cells and their output will be saved except your data so that that means this mobile uh, clean.csv will be deleted because i don't know which in which they will not going to assign me the same system, right? So usually they, that's their practice to clean the data, whatever data we are uploading here, they, it will get deleted. E, no, even though your Google account, for there they are storing your uh, this code and their outputs. It will store that, but not this data because the we do they are not going to uh, they randomly assign any uh, us any available system okay so they upload it run the same code yeah it will work yeah okay uh just few more things uh we can do here uh let's do some plotting with respect to it uh, so let's say we have the data and we have to plot some data so I, we will use a library called matplotlib.pyplotspld and import cborn as sns so these are common uh, libra uh, libraries which we use for plotting are not only data results as well Okay, so any results evaluation or the confusion matrix or the, uh, the values of accuracy, precision recalls, all these things we will uh, use this library plotlib uh, or the seaborn. We use both of them in conjunction 
to run our code okay so let's say if you want to uh, plot our this thing or data thin df thin right so i will do pair plot and uh, if i do df thin it will take some time so it will show me the the all the features that i have five features so for that it will come it will show me the pair plot so pair plot is what is happening it will create a plot with all with one uh, with every pair of the feature that means is like is paired with the standby time is like is been by experimental uh, expandable memory is prior uh, has been plotted with respect to prices battery capacity is liked or not uh same for battery capacity is being plotted against standby time expandable memory like that so this is one way to plot it now there is another thing to how to analyze the data to compare that which feature is more lean uh in linear with the uh with the another feature or how or how we can look at that they are pole apart right the standby time and all is like is totally pull apart with respect in it's in more like a categorical thing right here it's more uh, battery capacity is more like a linear and uh, comes down to few values so those to understand those relations uh, we have to uh, see these plots to uh, look at it and analyze is there any relationship extra that you can extract out of it or not okay so if see the idea here is that eventually so all this mechanism that what we are doing if i have a data set of 40 features okay this is the original data set of 40 features now looking at all the 40 features for me might be cumbersome might be computationally expensive and all those stuff so we want uh, we if we want to know only about few aspect of it that i just want that i will take only five features which are of interest of me let's say uh, standby time memory price and battery and from that features i want to know whether the uh, what is the popularity of the particular mobile right so i will to make the model train on it i should know that i should need only these four uh, features and to know this that these features are only needed or required we can use pandas and it's uh, or numpy basically pandas will give us in much more detail that how to look at data set and after plotting we can look the relationship of each features with respect to it so there is a concept of independent features and dependent features uh, where one feature is dependent on other other right so that will affect lot of things uh, while training a model so for all these things these are some tools that we have looked today uh, with respect to it okay and then you can obviously uh, do lot of uh, what you say uh, play with this data set of plots whether uh, you can add multiple options uh, provided with respect to it uh, to how to colorize your plots and how to uh, look at it right so it will provide this kind of plots as well eventually so lot of things to play with uh, the idea is to give you an overview and says that maybe if you are interested later uh, because from the next time we are not going to talk much about the matrices uh, the numpy array the pandas and all we will going to use it by default in our things right because that is not our area of focus Fo area of focus will be the learning algorithm the gradient descents the multi how yes we are telling if you are telling about uh, a neuron right a basic neuron or perceptron right so how we are defining their y y equal to w x plus c right how how we are storing that data so we will be focusing on that much more and uh, pandas numpies will help us with respect to it to a little bit extent to a good extent to support that in our coding journey now i think it's already almost 15 minutes left so i will just uh stop here on the coding part i'll just what you give is provide this code link i'll put down in chat 
ओके आई विल पुट डाउट इन माई कमेंट सेक्शन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सेक्शन ऑल्सो फंस दिस रिकॉर्डिंग इज डन ओके सो ओनली द लास्ट थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट इज कॉल जार्स एंड and i want to talk about how we are going to see it one by one so anything that you are going to learn also right in deep learning if you able to map your thing within this six jars it will be helpful for you to understand so maybe what i can do is i can write it down two things that what do i mean by it so six jars of machine learning okay so our jars are defined as this uh that six jar means six important components uh of machine learning that we are going to do so uh so we have data we have something called as task we have uh model loss function uh learning algorithm and evaluation okay so you are whenever you are creating any uh, pipeline uh, machine learning pipeline all these things will come into the picture right so let's talk about it one by one just to give an overview and i will try that uh, when we are coding also i will tell about this six aspect of it so when you are coding a whole perceptron model or multi layer perceptron model feed fault network all these things i will try to comprise within this three six jars okay so data is simple the the kind of data set that we have seen right now is a data that is the fuel for our deep learning models deep learning models right and here we deal also with the data processing as well so whatever op uh, operational libraries we have seen uh, in in terms of numpy is panda is a matplotlib uh, is just for helping us to prepare our data okay so once we have the data the second stuff the second thing that we need to know about uh, task right so the question is what to do with the data so what task can come into the picture so here we usually talks in the terms of classification regression when we talking about but if we go more deep it we may talk about image captioning uh object detection uh ocr right uh that is character recognition so these are the kind of tasks that we usually look at it so once you have the data second thing you should ask what kind of task you going to do with that data okay now third is uh, basically the models so how we can define it as uh, what is the mathematical formulation of a task okay so uh, we'll the task in which we are going to talk uh, talk about is it a uh, it's a linear function it's a linear function or polynomial function functions or maybe non linear so we will talk about it more later but this model are when we talking about model uh, this kind of things uh, this model we're talking about it's only about the mathematical formation like how can you give now you know that task is there right now how can you define it as a mathematical formula because eventually we have said that whole machine learning will come down down to this function y equal to fx right where x you have y you have okay for training but you have to identify what is the f what is that function so that function when we are talking about that we are talking about is basically a model okay a uh, lot of terms are interchangeable but in this context when you're talking about uh we talk about in that fashion itself so let's say now next is loss function right so loss function will be how do i know uh which model is better a 
of performing better like that. So for that, we have some loss functions with respect to it. How do we know that a model is uh, learning properly or not? It's going in the right direction or not, right? So for that, we have a lot of uh, loss functions like, uh, like mean square error, uh, cross entropy, KL divergence, all this thing you will learn also. But uh, loss functions are there just to understand us, to uh, make us understand that that which mod, how should I know that model is learning better? Okay. Last two is learning algorithms and evaluation. Now, learning algorithm is our actually main thing. So that is what we are we are learning right now. So uh, once we have the model, uh, some mathematical formulation and all, what we need to know that a mechanism to identify the uh, the parameters out of it. So what do I mean by it? So let me write how to uh, how do we identify the parameters for the model okay to give you a context uh, let's say our model is something like ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus t okay now uh, this is our model somehow this is our mathematical model or maybe uh, the algorithm which able to come to this stage okay now the what learning algorithm do is is try to identify the values of a b c and d okay so when we are saying y equal to fx okay so this f is basically might be like this okay if this kind of equation might be there or might be more com uh, complicated kind of like that but we have to identify certain values for this such that it will fit and such that when we fit these values it should give me the value of y eventually right so that's what we are trying to do so here we when we talk about uh, learning algorithm it's basically a parameters estimation that what kind of parameters we need for the model and here we use uh, terms like gradient descent back propagation or even our cnn adam optimizers so these are multiple things that we do we combine them together uh, in this to calculate these values okay the purpose of whole machine learning or deep learning will be to identify these parameter values that we are dealing with the, the algorithm the concepts that you're going to learn right now eventually to identify such kind of parameters only because features you have, x you have, y you have. Now, when you're creating a set of rules automatically, you should know what are the threshold of that, right? Which feature I should consider, uh, what is the weightage of the feature I should give to that. That weightage is basically the uh, parameter. That parameters we are going to learn from learning algorithms. Now, after we learn the algorithm, after we train the data and our learning algorithm able to identify the uh, function, which whenever I pass a new x, it, sh it should check with the original y, right? So evaluation will look at that. How do we compute a score for our ML model? So here the value of uh, the matrix like accuracy, precision, uh, recall, all these things co will come into the picture. Okay, so these are the few things. Uh, six jars of machine learning that we are going to deal with. So the whole code that we're going to write will be defined under these six jars. What kind of data we are look, going to look, what kind of task we are going to look, model, what kind of model uh, eventually is going to be extracted, right? So this model loss function and learning algorithm will come into the picture. like all come together in a single thing, but uh, to better explainability, we are dividing to three parts. Loss, uh, loss function is for understanding that whether the model is learning better or not. So what is learning? 
so it is learning the parameters right so how far it is from the actual parameters uh, with respect to it so all this thing will uh, come into the in a single combined module and once the model is trained how do we evaluate it right so we have multiple metrics for it accuracy precision records are the common the most popularly used one okay so so today what we have seen or oh, i just gave an overview with respect to it so we started with of basically uh, how we reached to ml systems through the expert systems that was how we are trying to automate the decision making with respect to our past experiences this past experiences are which we are calling basically as a data set now this data set we are going to pass uh, considered as a features and from this features uh, the data that we have we have, we want to extract some rules out of it earlier people doing it manually now we want to uh, try to learn uh to how to write new rules out of it so there the machine learning or deep learning aspect will come into the picture and uh, we you have to see that the roles in the ml world that where you stand right now so you have to reach to a level till ml ml engineering where you should know that given a data and define and the type of tasks that you have you should know that what kind of models uh you should use or what kind of uh, uh, architecture like cnn rnn transformers uh what kind of architectures you should use to train on your data okay and we are going to use heavily pytorch and google collab uh, every every code will be written on google collab and i will use pytorch for it uh today uh we have seen the uh, supporting uh supporting libraries which we are going to use heavily over the course that is numpy pandas so we have used numpy we have used pandas okay and matplotlib as well so these three libraries also we're going to use apart from the pytorch okay uh apart from that we have uh, as the ending note if you're going to see your machine learning task or any deep learning task try to put them on into this six jars that what is your data what kind of task you're going to want to do on that data what is your model that is uh, which you're going to learn that uh, task right what is your loss function what is your learning algorithm which going to uh, use while training the model and what is your evaluation how going to evaluate your model right so if you ask this few questions like what to do with the data what is a mat mat mathematical formulation uh, how do i know which model is better and how do i identify the parameters of model and how do i compute a score of a model if you can put all your learning within this six jars that will be helpful for you eventually when you start writing your code as well okay so that's the overview uh, uh and that's the content i think it's already five so we will stop here so if you have any questions please let me know um otherwise the session is ending from my side but this is what we are going to do for next uh another 12 months or uh, 12 weeks right we are going to code it out or uh, we going to i am going to explain the codes written for each of these mp neuron uh, perceptron speed for network and all those stuff okay yeah so thank you thank you for taking out time especially on sunday afternoon uh, i know it's a uh, tough for for you people also with respect to this but uh, you have to uh, start learning with respect you have to spend good amount of time because deep learning is a advanced course where lot of uh, background knowledge of linear algebra statistics will be required right up so and maybe little bit of calculus i think that will be covered in the theory session in uh, this sessions uh, mostly we'll going to look at the coding part okay yeah uh, any questions uh, i will share the recording uh, like once uh, this session is over i will upload on youtube and then after that uh, every week you can look into it so maybe from next week uh, once i started recording i will give you the youtube link as well the playlist link and i will keep on adding there once the session is over and you can look at it later from there as well thank you everyone uh thank you so uh, one question is whether we will use python or any other local language logical language prolog no we are not going to use prolog we will everything will be in python because python is the most popular language where everyone is coding their deep learning models and machine learning models so we will use that 
thank you and uh, maybe from next time i will i will try to see uh, if because we have to write lot of code so i might not type each and every code i will write few set of codes and few set of code i will uh, keep it as it is so i will tell you all this logistics at that point of time uh, but apart from that if you have any suggestion for me to improve just please let me know for that as well